10 things you didn't know about Burundi. Hello, this Flores. Welcome to another informative video presented to you by this Flores and thanks for watching. In this video, we will take an in-depth look at one of Africa's smallest countries, Burundi. Burundi is a landlocked country in the Great Rift Valley where the African Great Lakes region and East Africa converge. Burundi is one of the few countries in Africa along with its neighbor Rwanda, among others such as Botswana, Lesotho and Eswatini, to be a direct territorial continuation of a pre-colonial era African state. The early history of Burundi and especially the role and nature of the country's three dominant ethnic groups, the Twa, Hutu and Tutsi, is highly debated amongst academics. However, it is important to note that the nature of culture and ethnic groups is always fluid and changing. While the groups might have migrated to the area at different times and as distinctly different ethnic groups, the current distinctions are contemporary sociocultural constructs. Initially, the different ethnic groups lived together in relative peace before problems started emanating, and the first conflict between the ethnic groups can be dated back to the 17th century when land was becoming ever scarcer because of the continuous growth in population. The Twa, Hutu, and Tutsi peoples have lived in Burundi for at least 500 years. For more than 200 of those years, Burundi was an independent kingdom until the beginning of the 20th century, when Germany colonized the region. Burundi is a member of the African Union, Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, United Nations, and the Non Alliance Movement. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Burundi has a population of about 11.8 million people, spread over 27,834 km square of land. The official languages of the country are Kirundi and French. So let's take a closer look at this small African country with the 10 things you didn't know about Burundi. Number 1. Burundi is the first country in the world to leave the ICC. Due to large criticism from the International Criminal Court to Burundi, Burundi left the ICC. Burundi's government has been repeatedly criticized by human rights organizations, including Human Rights Watch for the multiple arrests and trials of journalist Jean-Claude Kavumbagu for issues related to his reporting. Amnesty International named him a prisoner of conscience and called for his immediate and unconditional release. Also on the 13th of July 2017, Human rights defender Germain Rukuki was arrested in the capital of Burundi, and he is currently serving an outrageous 32-year prison sentence simply for advocating for human rights. To avoid facing their acts of violence and human rights abuses, Burundi officially left the International Criminal Court ICC on 27 October 2017, the first country in the world to do so. The move came after the UN accused the country of various crimes and human rights violations, such as extrajudicial killings, torture, and sexual violence, in a September 2017 report. The ICC announced on 9 November 2017 that human rights violations from the time Burundi was a member would still be prosecuted. Number 2. Burundi is the poorest African country. Burundi is a landlocked, resource-poor country with an underdeveloped manufacturing sector. The economy is predominantly agricultural, accounting for 50% of GDP in 2017 and employing more than 90% of the population. One of the smallest countries in Africa, Burundi's land is used mostly for subsistence, agriculture and grazing, which has led to deforestation, soil erosion and habitat loss. Subsistence agriculture accounts for 90% of agriculture. Burundi's primary exports are coffee and tea, which account for 90% of foreign exchange earnings, though exports are a relatively small share of GDP. Other agricultural products include cotton, tea, maize, sorghum, sweet potatoes, bananas, manioc, beef, milk, and hides. Even though subsistence farming is highly relied upon, many people do not have the resources to sustain themselves. This is due to large population growth and no coherent policies governing land ownership. Burundi is one of the world's poorest countries, owing in part to its landlocked geography, poor legal system, lack of economic freedom, lack of access to education, and the proliferation of HIV AIDS, leading to approximately 80% of Burundi's population living in poverty. Famines and food shortages have occurred throughout Burundi, most notably in the 20th century and according to the World Food Programme, 
56.8% of children under age 5 suffer from chronic malnutrition. Number 3. Civil war and genocides have characterized the country's past. Civil wars and strife is a signature problem to many African nations, and this act, as unfortunately terrible as it is, is still occurring even today, and Burundi has not been an exception when it comes to that phenomenon. In late April 1972, two events led to the outbreak of the Busu famine, which was the first Burundian genocide. On 27 April 1972, a rebellion led by Hutu members of the gendarmerie broke out in the lakeside towns of Rumonje and Nyanzalak, and the rebels declared the short-lived Matiazo Republic. The total number of casualties were never established, but contemporary estimates put the number of people killed between 80,000 and 210,000. In addition, several hundreds of thousands of Hutu were estimated to have fled the killings into Zaire, Rwanda, and Tanzania. In 1976, Colonel Jean-Baptiste Bagaza a Tutsi led a bloodless coup to topple Mikambero and set about promoting reform. In August 1984, Bagaza was elected head of state and suppressed political opponents and religious freedoms. In 1992, the government created a new constitution that provided for a multi-party system, but a civil war broke out. An estimated total of 250,000 people died in Burundi from the various conflicts between 1962 and 1993. Since Burundi's independence in 1962, two genocides have taken place in the country. The 1972 mass killings of the Hutus by the Tutsi-dominated army and the mass killings of Tutsis in 1993 by the Hutu majority. Both were described as genocides in the final report of the International Commission of Inquiry for Burundi, presented in 2002 to the United Nations Security Council. Number 4. 2015 unrest set the country on the reverse. In April 2015, protests broke out after the ruling party announced President Pierre Nkurunziza would seek a third term in office. Protesters claimed Kurunziza could not run for a third term in office, but the country's constitutional court agreed with the president, even though some of its members had fled the country at the time of its vote. An attempted coup d'etat on 13 May failed to depose Nkurunziza. He returned to Burundi, began purging his government, and arrested several of the coup leaders. Following the attempted coup, protests however continued and over a thousand hundred people had fled the country by May 20th causing a humanitarian emergency. There are reports of continued and widespread abuses of human rights, including unlawful killings, torture, disappearances, and restrictions on freedom of expression. Despite calls by the United Nations, the African Union, the United States, France, South Africa, Belgium, and various other governments, the ruling party held parliamentary elections on 29 June, but these were boycotted by the opposition. Number 5. The Commission of Inquiry Investigated Burundi On 30 September 2016, the United Nations Human Rights Council established the Commission of Inquiry on Burundi through Resolution 33 on 24. Its mandate is to conduct a thorough investigation into human rights violations and abuses committed in Burundi since April 2015, to identify alleged perpetrators and to formulate recommendations. The Human Rights Council extended the mandate of the Commission for another year in September 2017. On 29 September 2017, the Commission of Inquiry on Burundi called the Burundian government to put an end to serious human rights violations. It further stressed that the Burundian government has so far refused to cooperate with the Commission of Inquiry, despite the Commission's repeated requests and initiatives. The Commission conducted interviews with more than 500 Burundian refugees abroad and others who remained in the country and reached the conclusion that serious human rights violations and abuses have been committed in Burundi since April 2015. The violations the commission documented include arbitrary arrests and detentions, acts of torture and cruelty, inhuman or degrading treatment, extrajudicial executions, enforced disappearances, rape, and other forms of sexual violence. Number 6. Burundi is the least happy nation in the world. Studies since 2007 have shown Burundians to have extremely poor levels of satisfaction with life. 
The World Happiness Report 2018 rated them the world's least happy nation in 2018, with a rank of 156. The reason for the sad nation has to do with a bad government, poverty and immense debts. The purchasing power of most Burundians has decreased as wage increases have not kept up with inflation. As a result of deepening poverty, Burundi will remain heavily dependent on aid from bilateral and multilateral donors. Foreign aid represents 42% of Burundi's national income, the second highest rate in sub-Saharan Africa. Burundi joined the East African Community in 2009, which should boost its regional trade ties, and also in 2009, received $700 million in debt relief. Government corruption is hindering the development of a healthy private sector as companies seek to navigate an environment with ever-changing rules. Number 7. Burundi is not rich in natural resources. Many African countries are blessed with natural resources, which are highly demanded in the world market, as well as demand a high price, but Burundi is not so blessed with those. Not necessarily that they lack these resources altogether, but the ones available are not in abundance, nor highly demanded. Some of Burundi's natural resources include uranium, nickel, cobalt, copper, and platinum. Besides agriculture, other industries include assembly of imported components, public works construction, food processing, and light consumer goods such as blankets, shoes, and soap. These small and spotted potentials are not enough to support the country from its hole of poverty, given its leaders embezzle a large proportion of it. Number 8. Telecommunication is one of the worst in Burundi. Unfortunately for the petite country, technological advancement has not been prioritized by its government to make up for the lack in other aspects and sectors. In regards to telecommunications infrastructure, Burundi is ranked second to last in the World Economic Forum's Network Readiness Index. An indicator for determining the development level of a country's information and communication technologies, Burundi ranked number 147 overall in the 2014 NRI ranking, down from 144 in 2013. Lack of access to financial services is a serious problem for the majority of the population, particularly in the densely populated rural areas, only 2% of the total population holds bank accounts, and fewer than 0.5% use bank lending services. Microfinance, however, plays a larger role with 4% of Burundians being members of microfinance institutions, a larger share of the population than that reached by banking and postal services combined. 26 licensed microfinance institutions offer savings, deposits, and short to medium-term credit. Dependence of the sector on donor assistance is limited. Burundi is part of the East African Community and a potential member of the planned East African Federation. Economic growth in Burundi is relatively steady, but Burundi is still behind neighboring countries. Number 9. Burundi's transport system is limited. Burundi's transport network is limited and underdeveloped. According to 2012 DHL Global Connectedness Index, Burundi is the least globalized of 140 surveyed countries. Bujumbura International Airport is the only airport with a paved runway, and as of May 2017, it was serviced by four airlines, Brussels Airlines, Ethiopian Airlines, Kenya Airways, and Rwand Air. Kigali is the city with the most daily flight connections to Bujumbura. The country has a road network, but as of 2005, less than 10% of the country's roads were paved. And as of 2013, private bus companies were the main operators of buses on the international route to Kigali. However, there were no bus connections to other neighboring countries. Bujumbura is connected by a passenger and cargo ferry to Kigoma in Tanzania. There is a long-term plan to link the country via rail to Kigali and then onward to Kampala and Kenya. Number 10. Burundi has a rich culture. Burundi's culture is based on local tradition and the influence of neighboring countries, though cultural prominence has been hindered by civil unrest. Since farming is the main industry, the typical Burundian meal consists of sweet potatoes, corn, and peas. Due to the expense, meat is eaten only a few times per month. When several Burundians of close acquaintance meet for a gathering, they drink impeke, a beer, 
together from a large container to symbolize unity. Crafts are an important art form in Burundi and an attractive gift to many tourists. Basket weaving is a popular craft for local artisans. Other crafts such as masks, shields, statues and pottery are made in Burundi. Drumming is an important part of the cultural heritage and dance often accompanies drumming performance, which is frequently seen in celebrations and family gatherings, especially Christmas. The country's oral tradition is strong, relaying history and life lessons through storytelling, poetry and song. There you have it, the explorers. Those were the 10 things you probably didn't know about Burundi. Thanks for watching this video, and if you did enjoy, do well to give it a thumbs up, do not forget to subscribe, and share with your friends.